Hello, welcome to today's live video. I have a really, really quick one for you today. I don't want to talk too much because my my voice is still not fully recovered. You can hear I'm a bit of a <clears throat> I'm a bit of a cackler. So I've got some history intolerance uh, tips and tricks for you. And the reason I'm bringing you this video right now is I just had a consultation with a lady that has histamine intolerance, and it sort of refreshed my 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 thought process on this situation. And just just to give you some background, I had histamine intolerance myself. Had being the key word there, I no longer have it whatsoever. I literally just ate a whole pack of chorizo, which is like aged meat, like the highest histamine thing you could imagine. No problems. I literally don't even think about histamine anymore. It's just, it's just a non-issue for me. I've also helped probably 200 plus people also do this as well. So I've, I, I know a lot about histamine intolerance. I have a lot of experience here and I, a lot of what I know isn't stuff you can just find on the internet. You really have to learn this by either going through it or working through it with other people and having their anecdotal experiences. So these are some tips you're just not going to see anywhere else. So you want to, you want to hear these tips. So the first one is just because the food has histamine in it doesn't mean it's going to cause a histamine reaction in your body. And what I mean here is we need to look at certain foods as having, instead of the total histamine, we need to look at the net histamine. And what this means is Whilst some foods contain histamine, they also contain other compounds that break histamine down. And one of the most interesting examples of this I see is liver. And liver, even if you get it, even if you kill the animal and you rip the liver straight out and you eat it raw, it actually still has quite a high amount of histamine in it because this is where animals break histamine down. This is where, this is like one of the most biologically active organs in an animal's body or in your body. So there's a lot of processes happening and as a consequence, there's a lot of biological amines that are active in in that in that part of the body so if you eat liver it can have a lot of histamine in it but the thing is it provides your body with with so, so many different things and i'm using liver here as an example but th this can be for anything this can be any food we were also talking about like strawberries or some some other like food to put in a smoothie you know it doesn't really matter what the food is but the point i'm trying to say here is if the food contains more things that are going to help your body break histamine down than histamine actually contains in itself, the net effect is histamine reducing instead of stimulating. So if it has 50 units of histamine, but it provides your body with the resources that it needs to break down 70 units of histamine, that food is now actually an antihistamine instead of a prohistamine food. And the, the common one that I see this with is liver. It wasn't the case for me. And, and this is, this is a, another thing that I'm going to talk about in just a second. So we'll go into that then. But this this really is a case-by-case -case basis and this is a person-by-person -person basis. There is no rule to this and the only way you can figure this out is by trying. This is a trial and error process. And I know people don't like to hear that because you want to see it on lab work. You don't want to have to trust your instincts or find this out by yourself. But that's the only way you can do it. That's the only way you can figure this out is by trying. Hi, Nancy. Nancy says, William. Hi, Nancy. Lovely to, lovely to have you. So if you if you are just living by a food list and you're just not eating loads of foods that you want to eat because they're high in histamine, don't do that. You have to, and, and the, I mean, it's really funny. I have a, I have a, a histamine food list, you know? So I, I have a list and this, this, it's good to have this information, but this is not the way you need to live your life. You need to try and see. And if it does give you a reaction, then you know, obviously don't do it just yet. But just because it's high on a list doesn't mean it's going to cause a histamine response inside your body. It can actually have a net negative effect. So it's providing resources to your body that are going to help you break more histamine down than the food actually contains itself. Really, really important. Secondly, I have never seen two people have the same histamine intolerance. It is always different. Histamine intolerance is not the same thing in different bodies. Some people, they can tolerate high histamine vegetables, but not leftovers. But other people can tolerate minced meat, but not an aged steak. But I have other clients that have tolerated an aged steak, but not raw vegetables that have high histamine in. It's like, it, 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 it there's, there's, it's so complex. It's so complex. There's no, there's no like solid rule. And again, I know people don't like that. I know, I know you really want eat this, don't eat that, follow this list, do this guide, but that's not how this process works. This is always individualized. This is always pers individual specific. Nobody's histamine intolerance is the same as somebody else's. I used to be able to eat minced meat that I'd cook and then I could leave as leftovers for like four or five days. No histamine problems. Whereas I couldn't tolerate liver. 
I also couldn't tolerate like an aged steak. I couldn't tolerate any low his, uh, any high histamine vegetables. That's just not what worked for me. I have to cough. Just give me a second. I'm, I'm still recovering. My throat still isn't, isn't great yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so here Nancy says I was taking beef liver capsules for a month. It was uncomfortable. I have since been taking beef kidney and feel better. Not great though. This is really interesting. So beef kid, uh, kidney is one of these organs that has a high amount of DAO. A lot of DAO supplements are actually made of kidney. DAO is diamine oxidase. This is the compound, the enzyme that, that breaks histamine down. So this is a really good example of one of these net negative histamine foods because yes, any animal product will have some level of histamine in it, even if it's very fresh, but the amount of the DAO in it means it's a net negative food, which is a really interesting thing. And this is different for everyone. So you really have to explore but what I want to get. The point I want to get across is don't just live by food list. Don't just live by what somebody else has said. You have to build this relationship with your own body. You have to figure this out by yourself because everybody has their own set of rules. And if you, if you are missing out on including certain things in your diet that you would actually enjoy, that's like enjoying the food you eat is really important. It's actually a really important part of healing. And I wish I understood that more when I started my, my, my own healing process. So that's, that's really what I wanted to share with you today. Just everybody's histamine intolerance is different. And just because a food is high in histamine doesn't mean it's going to cause a histamine reaction inside your body there. You can have a net negative effect from, from different types of foods. There's so much more I could talk about with histamine intolerance. You know, I could talk about histamine produced in the gut by gut dysbiosis. I could talk about mast cell activation syndrome and how histamine is released by mast cells and different substances we can use like amylase, the digestive enzyme that we can use as a mast cell stabilizer. I can literally talk about histamine until the cows come home. I can talk about histamine all day. So if you like this little video and you want me to do more videos about histamine, give me your questions. Let me know what you want me to talk about. I've solved this problem myself. I've helped hundreds of people do it as well. I really don't want you to have to suffer with histamine intolerance because life's amazing when you can eat pizza again. You know, life's amazing when you don't have to be freezing all of your food and you can just eat leftovers. Life's amazing when you can eat cheese and you can eat chocolate and you can drink wine and you can eat chorizo like I just did earlier. It's really cool when you get to that point. And I want to help you get there too. So let me know what your questions are. I would really love to help you do it. That's everything for me today and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.